For more than 125 years, generations of immigrants have entered America under the watchful gaze of a goddess. Watch this. It's even more damning to consider that the city chosen as the capital of the United States, Washington, D.C., literally stands for the District of Columbia. The nation's capital was named for the New World's Goddess of Liberty and was from her 1776 infancy a reincarnated Isis, containing all the necessary attributes of the ancient infernal goddess. Her worship and reverence has spread far beyond pagans and covens and cabals, reaching into public schools, universities, and mainstream beliefs. Out of this occult District of Columbia, the spirit of the goddess seethes continuously. Welcome to Skywatch TV. I'm Derek Gilbert. We're in the middle of a four-week investigation about the new film, Belly of the Beast. This is uh, not only deals with the occult underpinnings of these United States, but also prophetic fulfillment that uh, occult secret societies, many of which include very influential members of American society, are working toward. Joining me as we discuss the uh, influence of the divine feminine on the United States this week, Skywatch TV and Defender Films CEO Tom Horn. Good to Tom. be here. And the uh, men behind Fall Brothers Productions, the producers of the film and the producers of the uh, excellent documentary film, The Hollow Earth Chronicles, Justin Fall and Wes Fall. Thank you, Derek. Derek thank you. Um, this is kind of disturbing as, as we realize that the Lady Liberty, the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor, is actually the representation of a goddess, and that the, the, the nation's capital is named for a goddess. What, what you know, Wes, what, what are we dealing with here? How, how did this happen in a supposedly Christian nation? Right. Well, we've, uh, we've been conditioned. We've been desensitized. It's, it's become like a, a normal thing for us to, when we go to the, to a, uh, the courthouse or if we go to some, some building, um, capital, what have you. Well, here in the state of Missouri, yeah, the Capitol Dome here in Jefferson City is topped by a statue of Ceres, the goddess of grain. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's just become a normal thing. We don't think anything of it. Um, if you go back to, well, just looking at what's, you know, the scripture, one of the things that the first, I'm going to have to go Old Testament on you guys, so sorry okay. about that. But um, That's okay. We still use that here. <laughs> right. That's right. Oh, Rabbi West. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Um, but um, we'll look at the Ten Commandments. The first thing that he says mm -hmm. is, I am the Lord your God. The second is, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Mm -hmm. And then don't make any of these graven images. Right. And, you know, we talked a little bit about that uh, last week about the 40-foot the, uh, stone owl and... And, and the significance of that. But it's the same kind of thing, and we've basically just become conditioned to think that this is just a, a normal thing and not to think about it. But um, we found out, like we were in our research, we found out that actually they, they considered them goddesses originally. Mm -hmm. So they weren't just like, this is, uh, you know, Lady Liberty, or this is, uh, you know, what have you, uh, Columbia. This, they were actually the goddess of liberty, like the, the clip showed, uh, we started off the show with. Hmm. So this is a, um, I, I guess this is, this is uh, eye-opening for Americans who just have always seen it as a symbol of the freedom, that we are a light unto the world, but uh, there's more to Columbia than, or, or, or Lady Liberty than, than meets the eye. Let me just take you back to, I guess it was about 2000, I believe it was 2001, 2002, uh, after 9-11 had taken place. Um, I was in a different state of mind at the time. But mm -hmm. I had a necklace that had Lady Liberty on it. It was like a, a mint coin, but it was, it was made out of uh, precious metal. And I remember people would ask about it, like, man, that's really nice. That's really nice. What is that? Well, well it's Lady Liberty. Okay, mm -hmm. that was my response. I remember that. Mm -hmm. We have come up in a time period, Derek. You, me, Wes, Tom, and probably everybody who's ever going to watch these programs just because of who, who could be alive right now, everybody who is alive right now, we have come up in a time where we have been conditioned. There is a strategic plan in place that was plotted out by the cabals, the, the, the cabals of the world, to literally take the great nation of America where people understood and, and, and it was, there was a freedom of information. People accepted the fact that they were occultists. People accepted the fact that they were witches and that there were uh, secret societies operating. People accepted that. Because we understood the fact that we could all come here and worship freely. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with what's going on here, but I'm going to be able to do what I do. That was one of the amazing things that America gave us. But what's happened in, in our lifetime, in our generations, and even several generations back, these things have been swept under the rug. They've been concealed by the powers that be so that we don't understand their end game. Mm -hmm. 
But now we're finding out by going, in, by, by, by going through the archives at the Library of Congress, by going through and finding out, this was always the goddess. This nation was dedicated to the goddess by the prominent founding fathers. We're not just dealing with a, a conspiracy theory here. We have actual original prints and negatives from the 17 and 1800s showing this goddess. This goddess literally, th- this li- lines right up with what Manly P. Hall said. He said that America was literally going to be this, this beacon of light, shining, mm. enlightening the entire world. And this goes back to the prophecies, the ancient prophecies that there would come this great continent in the Western Hemisphere. We've got the Greeks that talked about this. Uh, we, we've got the Egyptians, and we're talking thousands of years ago. This isn't something new. They prophesied that there was a Western continent in the world that they knew about, this great Western continent, th- th- this great Western Hemisphere, which mm-hmm. is actually this whole area. And if you notice in some of the older maps, the Western Hemisphere has its own sphere. Mm-hmm. You've, got, mm-hmm. you've got the entire set of the world on this right-hand circle, but then on this left-hand circle, it's only the Western Hemisphere. This is important. This is very telling on old maps because the Western Hemisphere was prophesied. It was long known about in the ancient world that there were great things coming for the occult world in the last days, that there would be this amazing revival of the old religions and that it would be another golden age, but it was not just any golden age. This was the golden age that was going to come at the Western Hemisphere. And this Western Hemisphere was going to lead the world in the greatest enlightenment that it's ever seen. And this lines up with Bible prophecy so close when we find out that there's going to be this this ruler who is going to bring together the world and and that there will be no place for Jesus Christ. But just to clarify that the biblical view of this is not nearly as positive as what the occultists are Mm -hmm. saying. In other words, this is going to be a time of trouble, the time of Jacob's trouble. The the ruler you're talking about is the Antichrist, isn't it? Absolutely. The son of perdition. And what's very interesting about this is that we have to have a revival of the ancient religions. We talked about this briefly in the first episode we did. According to the occultists. Right. Mm -hmm. And part of this religion is bringing in the goddess. Mm -hmm. We have to have the revival of this goddess. And America is literally topped with these goddesses. And they are all different representations from different periods of the same great divine feminine. Mm Mm-hmm. And and, and one of the main things that, Mm. that we get to in our big reveal is the connection with all this with ISIS and ISIS magic. And we're not going to get into that. Mm-hmm. We, can't, we can only go so far discussing that. But Tom brought up, uh, as we were talking before the show, the importance of these idols, the importance of these. And, and, and when they would build these, when they would forge these idols, that there was a spirit involved. Yeah, well, that's actually the ancient belief. Even the Christians believe that. The Vatican, you can read all the literature and history behind this. They believe that when you formed the idol that the, the actual essence or the spirit, if you want to think of it that way, of that entity would occupy that idol. And this is why the New Testament teaches us not to make graven images. Mm-hmm. Paul says, I wouldn't have you worshiping demons. So they totally did believe. And if the Bible believed it, but well, then I guess I have to also believe it, right? Mm-hmm. That we were inviting in these entities. By the way, this is not a conspiracy theory. Some of the most celebrated American historians, uh, David Ovison, mm-hmm. wrote a whole book on the, 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 the Freemasonic design and layout of Washington, D.C., and he goes on and on. He's a 33rd degree Freemason. His book is endorsed by the Grand Poobah of the Herodome where we went, right? Mm-hmm. So they all endorse it. He goes into great detail to explain how, when they were building these idols, when they were building these buildings, when they were dedicating the cornerstones, how important it was that these were put into the correct position, that they were dedicated at a time when we were in astrological alignment with that was celebrated celebrating Isis or Osiris or any of these gods and goddesses. It's designed in a way that when the sun rises during certain solstice, the light falls on particular. Yes. <laughs> very, very much was crafted, and he makes this point for one reason. He says it is very obvious that they were trying to gar- garner the approval of the pagan gods and goddesses that they would bring their blessings to overshadow this country. So this is American history. That's exactly what they were doing, and that's exactly why these goddesses are all there. And you make a great point in the documentary film where you show that uh, Lady Liberty and some of these other uh, goddesses are actually all homogenizations Mm -hmm. of all of the ancient deities known by different names, Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. 
I've often thought that on the great seal when it says out of many one, yes. that that's actually what they're talking about. Not out of all the different cultures of the world arises one great nation, right. but out of many one, which is actually an old pagan idea yes. that you have the different many faces of one singular entity, right? Yeah. It's and that, duality. Mm-hmm. Well, and it may just be, uh, you know, to borrow uh, some of Josh Peck's research into the multiverse, uh, the the... Our, our perception of an entity that is uh, that is uh, operates in, in more dimensions than we can perceive with our natural senses. Uh, you know, it's like the the blind man trying to figure out the elephant, and we all each see a different piece of it. And so these entities have manifest uh, manifested themselves in different forms with different names throughout history to different cultures. Right. Uh, but essentially, we're all dealing with the same. By the way, when I was a young preacher. This two-volume set, Occult Theocracy, Volume 1 and 2 by Lady Queenborough, that became one of the most important part of my library as a young um, wannabe preacher, right? <laughs> uh, it really did. It was eye-opening. It's scholarly. It's well done. Uh, it's been out of print for probably you know, 60, 70 years. We put it back into print. We're giving it away free uh, in this uh, promo. That's an $80 value by itself. Mm-hmm. Volume 1 is also the cipher for the Ottendorf code in the mega $10,000 giveaway. Yes. People can learn more about that at skywatchtv.com forward slash contest. You should participate in the contest because ultimately it's going to lead up to the giant reveal that is made in the fifth chapter of this film. But getting back to this idea of the goddesses, you said something a moment ago we should follow up on, and that is how ultimately this is all leading to ISIS <laughs> and why ISIS is so important in the whole both occultic but biblical prophetic significance um, in the United States of America, in the layout of Washington, D.C. One of the interesting things on this note is that the star Sirius is connected with ISIS. Mm -hmm. And we don't have time to break down all those connections. But what happens is you've got this ISIS, this Lady Liberty, this goddess Liberty, this goddess ISIS on top of the U.S. Capitol Dome, Mm -hmm. who was strategically put there right going up that... uh, It's a perfect diagonal line that leads right up to where the star Sirius will raise up and shine light. Mm -hmm. Now, we also know based on Tom's research previously that the Capitol Dome is a temple. Mm -hmm. They call it a temple on their websites. We actually go through this in the film. Mm -hmm. It's called the temple. The government calls it a temple. Hmm. And if you go and and you research the most approved plan, which uh, we take 4K high resolution images from their sites to show all of this up close in the film. So you're not just hearing about it, you're actually seeing our journey and our investigation. And it's interesting that we're doing an Ottendorf here because this whole film is like an Ottendorf. We've literally had to decode. (laughs) We're decoding this final message based on all of these things we're going through and we're having to put the pieces together to make it digestible. Because a lot of this stuff is really hard to digest. Mm -hmm. But the ISIS connection is unbelievable because when you deal with the Freemasons, you see, the Freemasons aren't the only ones that practice ISIS magic. There's a lot of that going on in occult, different types of occult groups. But you've got Isis, you've got Osiris, you've got some mysteries between the two of them that we're not going to break down right now, but they go back to the foundation Mm -hmm. of America and the prominent powers. Now, let's also just throw this out there for any history buffs. We have two sets of founders, okay? We have... The constitutional founders, which generally when somebody speaks of the founders of America, they're speaking of the George Washingtons. They're speaking of of him and and, and, and the crew that came up in the constitutional time. But we also go back before then. We had another set of founders. Uh, We briefly mentioned that with the Articles of Confederation. But more so speaking, because even the Articles of Confederation, you're dealing with people of the same secret societies. Mm -hmm. But the constitutional, generally speaking, when we talk about our our framers and our founders, um, usually we go back to Washington and those that followed. Mm -hmm. But I just want to throw that in there because even when you go back to the original founders of the Articles of Confederation, you're dealing with people practicing occult secret societies. Same men, same beliefs with the same goals. You know, and and you get into this whole, uh, this goddess idea and... um, Interestingly, a lot of the, the goddess worship, there, there tends to be uh, women that are elevated in goddess worship. Mm-hmm. And what we find out in some of this is that there is uh, historical accounts of seances taking place in the White House with Abraham Lincoln, mm-hmm. his wife. Mm-hmm. They, brought in, they brought in female mystics, mm-hmm. soothsayers. Uh, 
you know, we and we've got lith- we've got a lithograph actually of a séance taking place with Abraham Lincoln in the this White House. This was at the height of the Spiritism movement of the 19th century. Yeah, well, he, he even he even had a ghost council. That's a historical fact. Mm. Uh, Lincoln wouldn't make any uh, big decisions without consulting through his medium, his council of spirits of entities hmm. that would direct the path. But Same George Washington, it? a deist, a deist yeah, yeah. on record, a deist, which means he does not accept Jesus Christ. He was a Freemason. We know this. But the thing about George Washington is he even got into some of the spiritism stuff before it was even called spiritism. He was following after this movement uh, on mesmerism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of these early spiritual movements that were happening from the 1600s and the 1700s in America that nobody knows about. Their hand was being guided. Yes. Uh, In fact, the Newfoundland stamp that talks about Francis Bacon being actually the guiding light of the Atlantean movement here in the United States. We're going to rebuild Atlantis. We're going to give birth to a new golden pagan age. Mm. Welcome back to Skywatch TV. I'm Derek Gilbert. Our topic this week and for the last two weeks, uh, we're in the middle of an investigation into the uh, ancient mystery behind the secret of the Antichrist's resurrection and return. The film is called Belly of the Beast. The filmmaker, Justin Fall and Wes Fall, joining us. Uh, Dr. Tom Horn also on the panel this week as we uh, continue our discussion. Some of the the, the elements that, that uh, comprise goddish, goddess worship in America is, uh, I think, would, would startle many Americans. I mean, you, you bring in... Earth Day. I mean, environment, protecting the environment. That's a good thing, isn't it, Wes? <laughs> well, I mean, it sounds good. You know, go green. It's, uh, it's yeah. Help, the, help out the environment. I mean, recycling has almost become a civic religion here in the United States, That's even true. though, as we record this now, because the Chinese aren't taking our junk anymore, nobody, there aren't any recyclers who actually want our old newspapers or plastics. But still, so it's so ingrained in us that we feel bad when we throw away a pop can. It is. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not going to go into this too far. But one of the one of the pieces in the film, Carl talks about a um, I Carl Tykrib. Carl yeah, Tykrib. Yeah. Yes, he talks about. Um, he was attending one of the uh, World Federalists, I believe, mm-hmm. and and going in. It's 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 a it's religious. It's it's very religious. Um, they were actually even um, having to like confess of um, you know oh, sins my, against Gaia. It was yes. it was you know oh my dad's um, oil leaked out of his car when he was you know doing this and that or um, you know I threw out some trash. I mean literally and, and having to repent for these sins against the the environment. But it um, it basically is is taking yeah it's it's giving um, the Earth entity as as a uh, it's, it's deity more mm-hmm, or less. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, so they're actually worshiping this this being. But call it what you want to. Um, it is that ancient infernal goddess. Um, so you I mean you can call it um, you can call it Isis. You can call it Gaia. You can call it Diana. Um, even with the um, I don't think we've mentioned this yet, but um, the the statue was actually made after Athena and Minerva. Well, that's a good question because that's that's uh, uh, something I wanted to get into. Uh, Lady Liberty, the Statue mm-hmm. of Liberty. You know, who is that? Who, who does that statue represent? Diana, the ancient uh, uh, Roman and, and Greek goddess. You've got elements of various goddesses. Th- this is the thing about America, and this kind of goes back to what Tom just said about um, out of many one, mm-hmm. because you've got elements from different goddesses that have been woven into these statues. Mm-hmm. And when we were at the Capitol Dome, we got to see some of the progression. They've got photos showing the different progressions of the different molds and the casts, uh, getting it up to be where it is today. Uh, we've heard everything from the Statue of Liberty is uh, Semiramis and drag. Hmm. Um, th- there are all kinds of strange quotes about who these things are. But what I really liked about the original um, releases of these things, the early American releases were that they just called it the Goddess of Liberty. But the Library of Congress documents it as Athena right. or and Minerva. Minerva. Hmm. Uh, and both... Uh Again, very prominent deities back in the uh, the pagan era that uh, continued into the Christian era. Uh, there were still, uh, you know, a, a lot of uh, you know Greek and, and Roman citizens who were worshiping these uh, these entities after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, and, wh- and one of the really important things that Justin pointed out earlier was these ancient prophecies from Egypt and Greece and other places, seeing the Western Hemisphere as a place w- where this continent was going to rise or whatever, mm-hmm. and it was going to fulfill. It was going to bring about the the prophecy of the Kume Sibyl, which is on the Great Seal of the United States of America, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Of this rebirth of a final golden pagan age, the Mm -hmm. reinstitution of the worship of these gods. Well, 
you, you said that they predicted there would be a revival of that worship. We just last month finished a special investigation into the New Age. It's mm -hmm. the fastest growing religion in the United States of America. It's outpacing some of the old school Orthodox uh, uh, churches that mm -hmm. at one time were mainstream uh, in Christianity. You've got the Pope now in his encyclicals talking about the earth and using feminine language, her, she, mm -hmm. we can't be committing the, and he's, he's literally using New Age Gaia worshiping yes. Earth Day languages to, uh, uh, to elevate environmentalism as a kind of um, religious responsibility. See, the Pope has a, a history of United Nations work. The Pope will show up at the UN, give a historic speech. Not that like it's all the time, but we have, you know, we, we have history of this. And we even show film footage. Uh, the Pope at the time, I, I, I'm trying to remember which, uh, what his name was. Uh, but we've got footage of the Pope going and giving a speech at the UN, black and white film footage. And he gets a, a standing ovation. Standing ovation. And these are people hmm. from around the world, and, and, and their whole goal is globalism. Mm -hmm. The United mm -hmm. Nations has never had a goal that didn't involve bringing everyone together under a single government, single religion, a single control. Well, and, and we would want people to know, we're not bashing uh, Catholicism here no. any more than we would be Babdi uh, bashing some of our own sure. Baptist and Assemblies of God and whatever background, because all of our churches now, mainstream Christianity, sit with a recent polls that showing, studies showing, Pew Research, right? Mm -hmm. Respectable studies. 61% of evangelical Christians are espousing New Age beliefs. Right. So my whole point was, this was ancient prophecy from pagan origins yes, yes. that we're talking about at the end of time, there will be this revival, right? And it will bring about a reinstitution of the worship of the pagan gods, which will help give, well, fulfillment mm -hmm. to the prophecy on the great seal of the United States of America, which was all by design, right? It was. It was. And when we think about even uh, the name America, mm -hmm. there's so much encoded in the name America. And this is one of the things we break down in the film. You know, we've been totally lied to about so many things uh, growing up in America in our, in our nice white picket fence. It's you not know. Amerigo Vespucci? It's, no. It, well, you see, that's what you think growing up. But you mm -hmm. also think Columbus founded America, and you don't realize that the Greeks came over here and documented that the Great Lakes were here thousands of years ago. Really? Th there's a lot of inf interesting information we're bringing out in the film. Yeah. Right. America, or Amaru, uh, yes. Ka. Uh -huh. uh, and, and by the way, Manly P. Hall, one of the greatest thinkers ever in mm -hmm. Freemasonry, mm -hmm. wrote about this many years ago where he talked about that this was basically the land of the plumed serpent. The influences came to us from the red men that worshipped you know, in these human sacrificing cultures. I know we're running out of time on this show. Maybe in the next one we can make that whole point about Isis, Osiris, the layout what this is all headed to. We're not going to touch chapter five of the film because it is explosive. It is earth changing. Yeah. Lady Liberty modeled after Diana. Remember in the Bible, Paul had a run in with the uh, silversmiths in the city of Diana in Ephesus. It's not a coincidence that Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus in chapter six. We're not wrestling against human opponents, but against principalities, powers, the cosmic powers over this present darkness. They have a plan for your future. Christians, don't be unawares of the enemy's devices. The film, Belly of the Beast, the filmmakers, the Fall Brothers, Justin Fall, West Fall, Fall Brothers Productions, Defender Films, Skywatch TV, take advantage of this offer. With Tom Horn, Justin Fall, and West Fall, I'm Derek Gilbert. Thank you for watching as we keep watch. This notion of a feminine presence of deity in and throughout the immediate material world was of great importance to the Renaissance adepts. The anima mundi or soul of the world is described as being female and alchemy and geometry are both personified as being female. We even see the great revelation of the period such as the chemical wedding of Christian Rosencruz being pre preceded by the visitation of a feminine angel. Additional important concepts such as wisdom, the word, and the Holy Spirit are also feminine in nature and are cornerstones of Masonic symbolism. 
We often hear of the genius of Freemasonry referred to as she and discussed in anthropomorphic terms, expressing human qualities, but on a perfected or archetypal level. Consider the image of a woman sitting alone in a cell designed for contemplation wherein the mysteries are revealed, which is presented in the closing charge recited at the end of every lodge meeting. This symbol then takes on a deeper connection to both a literal spiritual force protecting Freemasonry and the Gnostic notions of the Divine Sophia, or Wisdom, the Bride of God. So they're saying that this is an actual literal spiritual force. The prayer of King Solomon from the Book of Wisdom. Let us pray. God of our ancestors and Lord of mercy, you have made all things, and in your providence have charged us to rule the creatures produced by you, to govern the world in holiness and righteousness, and to render judgment with integrity of heart. Give us wisdom. For we are your servants, weak and short-lived, lacking in comprehension of judgment and of laws. Indeed, though one might be perfect among mortals, if wisdom which comes from you be lacking, we count for nothing. Now with you is wisdom, who knows your will and was there when you made the world, who understands what is pleasing in your eyes, what is conformable with your commands. Send her forth from your holy heavens, from your glorious throne dispatch her, that she may be with us and work with us, that we may grasp what is pleasing to you. For she knows and understands all things, and will guide us prudently in our affairs and safeguard us by her glory. Amen. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. <laughs> 